Hi everyone and welcome to our lesson on strain energy. First we're going to explore the laws that govern what force a spring either in compression or extension applies and then we're going to use those laws to go on to explore how much strain potential energy is within the spring. So first of all look to this little graph up here because this is the graph that starts it all. Anyone who's compressed a spring knows that the harder you compress the spring the harder it pushes back. So if I have this spring pictured below and I'm compressing it x meters here it applies a force in this direction. That's what the graph above shows. If I compress it this much along here then this is the force that it will apply this height here. And the interesting thing about this graph is that it's linear at least for the compressions that we'll be doing. So it can be described by a simple law F is equal to K, a constant, that's the gradient there, multiplied by X. And this is known as Hooke's law. Oops. If F is in newtons and X is in meters, then we can explore what units K is in because we can get K by itself. F divided by X equals K. That means we've got F newtons over K meters. Therefore, K must be in newtons per meter. And we can use this law to solve all kinds of equations and problems about compression and extension. So I'll keep the law up there. I'll get rid of that stuff. So look down below here. Let's say we have two springs, one with a K value of 500 newtons per meter and another with a k value of 1000 newtons per meter and they're both under compression 5 centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. Let's find out how much force both of these springs applies in this direction here. So just to be clear the dotted line is where the spring would sit if there were no force on it, but we've compressed the spring to this level here. So we say our equation is F is equal to KX, which is equal to 500 times 0 0.05, which is equal to 25 newtons. So this spring here with a K value of 500 newtons per meter is applying a force of 25 newtons in this direction. Now let's look at the spring below. F equals KX, but the K value here is 1,000. So it's 1,000 multiplied by 0.05. That's 50 newtons. So this spring applies a greater force and it has a greater K value. If you're ever asked to compare the relative stiffness of two springs, the K value is what allows you to do that. This spring is stiffer because it has a higher K value. Now, Hooke's law and the spring constant also come into play when you hang a weight off a spring. Let's say we have a spring, we don't know how much it's been extended by, but we do know the mass hanging off it is one kilogram and the K value of the spring is 100 newtons per meter. Also, we'll say this mass down here is not accelerating. If it's not accelerating, the net force must be equal to zero. And that means the force of the spring on the object, pictured by this yellow arrow here, must be equal to the, the force of the, the gravity on the object, which is given by mass times the gravitational constant. That's one times 10 or 10 newtons. So the force of the spring must be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. Therefore, the force of the spring, F, is equal to 10 newtons. So we put our equation in, F equals KX. Being good physics students, we try and get the X by itself before we sub in the real values. So F on K is equal to X. That gives 10 over 100 k being 100, which is 1 on 10, or 0 0.1 meters. So since we know the k value of the spring and the force that the mass is applying to the spring, 
we can work out the extension. So now let's introduce a new concept, strain energy. And strain energy is given by this symbol, U, S. There we go. And the reason we know strain energy exists is this. If you've ever been bungee jumping or seen someone go bungee jumping, they are standing at a very great height. And we know that if you're standing at a great height, your gravitational potential energy is very high. If they jump off whatever bridge they're jumping off and fall down, they gain a lot of kinetic energy and they start moving very quickly. And if they weren't attached to the bridge by the bungee cord, it would end badly. But since they are, they lose a lot of gravitational potential energy, gain a lot of kinetic energy, and then that kinetic energy seems to disappear as the bungee cord starts pulling on their leg. It's actually being transformed again. It came from gravitational potential to kinetic, and now it's going into spring potential energy. So strain energy or spring potential energy is what you get when you apply a force to a spring, or simply the energy you have to put into a spring to compress it. Let's have a look at the equation for strain energy. So we know that strain energy is basically the area under a force times extension graph. Let's see if we can figure out that area. So this is obviously x there. This point here, the height, is f. And we know f is equal to kx. If this is the x point here, then this point here has to follow this rule. So f equals kx. And the total area is equal to a half base times height, or a half base, which is x, multiplied by the height, which is kx, which is a half kx squared. So writing that out formally, the spring potential energy is equal to 1 half times k times x squared. So as long as you know how much the spring has been compressed and the k value, you'll be able to tell anyone how much spring potential energy is in that spring. Let's figure it out for the examples we have to the left here. Where are we going to do this? I think there's a bit of room here. So for this spring here, sorry, use a US is equal to a half kx squared, which is equal to a half 500 times 0.05 squared. And I have that comes to 6.25 times 10 to negative 1. Since it's energy, we work in joules. Never ever confuse centimeters and meters because if you use centimeters in this formula, joules are not, um, what is a joule? A newtons times a meter. Yeah, joule, a joule is a newton times a meter. If you use a newton times a centimeter, you're no, you're no longer working in joules. You're working in some other unit of measurement. So always use newtons and meters in energy formulas. Now this spring down here, US is equal to a half kx squared. That's a half 1000.05 squared. Now it's got double the k value than this spring, so you can probably figure out what's going to happen. The total amount of energy comes to, where is this? One point two five joules. So it's got twice as much energy for the same compression than this spring here. Let's work out here how much spring potential energy is in this spring. US equals a half kx squared. That's a half times 100 times 0.1 squared. That's 0 0.5 joules. That's how much energy we had to expend in order to get this spring to, expend, to extend that 0.1 meters. Now strain energy can get very tricky in examples where a weight is falling down but is being resisted by a spring because sometimes those objects oscillate. Look to the example questions if you want to see how tricky that can actually become.